Oh, hello, boys and ghouls. It's your friend and your new favorite podcaster, Lucifer. And um, some of you may know me because of my uh, illustrations. Some of you may know me because of my band. But most of you know me because I have a brown dog that is very funny, entitled Bingo. So I'm very happy because uh, it's October. And October is my favorite month because of two reasons. Um, Halloween and because my birthday. And uh, in Spain, people start getting a bit depressed during the month of October because uh, the sun goes down earlier. It gets colder. But for me, this is good vibes because of Halloween and my birthday. <clears throat> Anyways, today we talk with my friend... Petri from the band Feastem. Uh, apart from Feastem, he also runs his record store called the fuck. I don't have the name on me right now. The other records is it called? I'm so sorry. Uh, so Petri runs the other records with Jason from Misery Index, and uh, it obviously specializes on everything and all things extreme. Uh, but they also sell like movies and books and we get into that we get into like him being a double dad we get into him going through hard times we get into crate digging we're both humongous crate diggers i think he outbids me through space and time um which reminds me petri his band and my band did a split a couple of years ago and um he most of the covers I make are collages and uh, he wanted to buy the the cover art of the record off of me and I was supposed to send it to him and I don't know what happened so I, I need to catch up with him and uh, I really like this conversation I feel like every time I have one of these conversations with uh, one of my friends uh, I don't know I feel like we build on our friendship and those who know me you know I really dig friendships um and that's that's it. I don't really have much much else to say. I, I I think the conversation is really fun, especially like the second half. At least that's the part I enjoyed the most. And oh, I added this one thing. Um, I at the beginning of the conversations of all of these podcasts, I always ask um, my guests if they prefer sweet or salty food. I've decided that at the end of the each podcast, I'm gonna ask um, like movie recommendations because uh, I love movies. <laughs> Please enjoy uh, my hour and a half chat with Petri from Feastem. Petri, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm excellent. I'm so happy to see you. Yeah, me too. Uh, I haven't seen you in uh, such a long time. When was the last time we saw I think it was. I think it was Obscene Extreme in 2015. No. We've seen each other after that for sure. We we saw each other at a Bloodshed Festival, I think. Oh, but Eindhoven. that was in Holland, so you can you can't expect me to remember every oh. minute detail. <laughs> okay, so that territory is when you're intoxicated. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. We did see each other there. That was uh, on the. Um, No wait, that that was that was at the end of the Kill the Client tour. That was like 2012. No, 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 no. I'm pretty. After that, didn't we both play um, Bloodshed Festival in like 2018 or 2017? It's possible, but I have to. I have to be honest. Like the last, I'd say the last um, five years are just this like one big blur like i've had two kids in in the last seven years and you know i had a job in between i've started a label and a record store and trying to do stuff with bands and it's just fucking congratulations just congratulations on all of that especially on being a double dad double duty thank you it's the uh it's the best thing that ever happened to me and sometimes the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, wait, wait. Before we get into nah. all this dad business and, and stuff, 
Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we've already begun, okay? Yeah. Um, so I wanna, I, I'm, I'm starting off all of these interviews with the same question. And I think you're gonna like mm -hmm. this one. Let's talk about food, mm -hmm. okay? So do you prefer oh, yeah. sweet or salty food? Sweet or salty food? Um, I would say salty food, but I do like my sweets. I have some grapes. Right All here. right. Okay. Healthy. So, and um, what's your favorite salty dish ever? Um, uh, that's a really hard one. I'm, I really like Asian food. Yes. So these things, they they always have these kind of mixes of both sweet and salty, but I, I'm really into woks like that's that's one of my favorite things to cook and it's also one of my favorite things to eat like make like some really good tofu wok and put in some uh, uh like um what's that what, what are those tiny small white tiny seeds that you can make oil out of okay um and the black ones no the white ones actually the white seeds i'm not familiar mm. with these white seeds you can you can use them on 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 bread as well. Sesame seeds. That's it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, some sesame seed oil and then uh, you know soy sauce, lots of fresh vegetables and some good noodles. Nice. So I I like your. I know about. me too, dude. Like I really <laughs> like your answer because you know one of like my biggest turn-ons in the world. I would also go for Asian food just because of the humongous mm. variety. Like if there's anything oh, yeah. that like drives me crazy, it's like uh, paying a reasonable amount of money for a lot of options. Like I love like just like picking around. I like having, mm. that's the magic of, uh, that's why I also like sushi, like a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this. Mm -mm -mm. Exactly. So yeah, good answer. Stuff. And one of, my, one of my favorite things ever is, um, that um indonesian uh chili sauce Ooh. um but it's just the name of it escapes me right now is it uh, I, the, like the mango flavor it, one? Huh? some some oil like no say it's that a sambal oil like okay oh fuck my my screen just went black okay i i can oh, see i know you. what it's about Oh yeah, I um my uh oh yeah, here we go. My my screensaver went on. So let me just oh, okay, put okay. this on full screen for now. There we go. Sambal oilek. Okay. That's like Duly my known. favorite chili sauce. Dude, have you ever tried Filipino food? I would like to say yes but I'm not 100% sure because I went to this restaurant in, uh, in Amsterdam with uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Mikey. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, was it Indonesian or okay. was it Filipino? I'm, I'm sorry, man. Not One a problem. Things, no, no, once, no, it's once just... again, once again, we were in Holland. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, not a problem because I feel like this is a cuisine not a lot of people have tried and reasonably so because uh, Filipino food hasn't like, it's not so, uh, I, I don't know, it hasn't expanded the way like Vietnamese or um, Thai or mm. Chinese or Japanese food. So I think there's a mm. future market for Filipino food. At, mm. Right now it's like, yeah, um, sure. yeah, yeah. So, um, Actually, I have had Filipino food. There's a Filipini, Filipino restaurant in Helsinki. And I took my wife there. Uh, but that's actually quite a while ago. Wow. 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 So okay. I, have, I have tried it. Yeah, it's, nice. it's a very small restaurant in the, on the top floor of this like big shopping mall. Okay. They have this sort of like a restaurant complex there. And okay. one of those places is a Filipino restaurant. And I, now I remember I actually made a point of going there because it's Filipino food and nice. I've never tried it. So I, I was we went just, there and it was, it was good. 
Awesome. Yeah, because since I, I'm, I'm getting the feeling you really like a, a mixture of sweet and salty and, and uh, Filipino food does this a lot. Okay. So I yeah. think that's, that's yeah. enough with the, with the Asian food for now. We can get back to it. <laughs> sure. So do you remember, okay, before all of this, let's talk a bit COVID. Like I know you've been hit okay. hard with COVID, especially because um, Feastem had just launched Graveyard Earth. Your, is that your third full-length album? It is our fourth full-length okay. album. Fourth full-length album. And you had just mm, released yep. the album. And, um, yep. and, and COVID hit and you guys had, I think two tours about to, you're about to go on the road. So we had, we had like, we had like one sort of full or like longer European tour and then two shorter ones booked and they all just, you know, went down the toilet. And, uh, I mean, it's really crazy. Like we released the album on Friday, the 13th in mm-hmm. March which was a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, ominous to begin with. <laughs> but we wanted to do it on Friday the 13th, just as a funny thing. And then, and then you know, all, all of this shit happens. It was our first full length in like seven years. And we had like, we had planned a lot of stuff, you know, to coincide with the release. And then they just, all, all of our plans just went to hell. So we're like, yeah, this is... Typical feast and luck. I mean, if it's not a stolen van or broken down gear, it's a fucking pandemic. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> and okay, how have you guys been doing anything? Like, um, like I know everything got canceled, yeah. but like uh, uh, on the other hand, have you been able to advance anyway? Uh, well, we've we've played a few shows in uh, in Finland, but besides that, we've done nothing. We had we had all these grandiose plans of like, oh yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna write some new material and release like a COVID EP and stuff like that. But um, I guess we've been just kind of lazy. I mean, Patrick just he he got accepted into a school. He's studying to become like an automotive engineer. And um, Oli also got accepted to this um, uh, coding coding um, oh, okay. project run by run by uh, or funded by Supercell. So, okay. You know the company that made Angry Birds. Oh, okay. Wow. So he's he's trying to like expand on his knowledge of uh, coding. And okay. uh, you know, I uh, I uh, I started this, so yeah. Let's get it. Everybody's been kind of busy uh, there in their own own areas, I guess. Okay, I want to get into this this uh, the other records. Your your shop in Helsinki with Jason because this is very mm-hmm. impressive. But we'll get into that a bit later. Right now, sure. I want to ask you if do you recall meeting each other when we met? Oh, the first time? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was in 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 Tampere. You guys, uh, you guys came to Finland for uh, for a couple of shows, and um, and uh, I actually drove from Helsinki to Tampere to see you guys because I I, I don't recall if you actually played Helsinki or. I couldn't make the Helsinki show or but some, but I, I drove to Tampere to see you guys. And I was like, you guys are, you guys rock. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was. And, fun. and you were, you were. Go ahead. Yeah. And you guys were very like, really? You, you actually like drove to see us? That's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I totally recall that show. And, um, Cause I, I was, uh, my mind was blurry. I don't know if that was the first time we met or it was, um, in Madrid when you played with kill the client. I think that was after. Yeah, I, I believe it was after. I mean, I, I remember you guys saying that you came to the show, but I'm not sure if we actually, uh, if we actually met at the show. 
Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, there we go. Because I got my timeline mixed up. Fuck yeah, and and the uh, mm. you that was a long drive. That's that's surprising because back then teething is not the humongous mm. Metallica band we are now. Like back then we were. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys weren't playing arenas like you're. you're exactly. Doing now, yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so that's cool. Like th- that gave me the impression that like you are a big. Uh, record nerd you're a big like grindcore hardcore dude you know like you know you opened a record store i know you're a big crate digger etc so so that 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 uh um i think that's where our bond began you know we later went on to release a split together um and we talked right yeah 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 i mean being being a nerd always helps to you know find these uh find these connections with other nerds you know you see somebody going like oh you, you collect record too yeah man it's fucking that's records are cool as shit exactly so exactly <laughs> so and then you start going into these details like oh i have this different pressing it's got the yellow label on it and it's, there's a misprint there and oh dude wow is that you, you know do you it's go just that, fun do you go that deep do you have like several colored vinyls of one record and stuff like that um i uh well i have i have a couple i mean a few of those but i i do collect neurosis records Mm -hmm. i'm trying to collect like all the different pressings and test pressings and stuff that i can wow and i also collect um autopsy records Wow. Autopsy is like my all-time favorite death metal band, and Neurosis must be like my my sort of all-time favorite band. Fuck so yeah, dude! Those are the two two bands that I collect like obsessively, if you will. Okay. Do you go? Is it just records, but, or do you also have like the CD, the cassette, and so on? Yeah, yeah. I try to collect like all formats and all 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 different versions and stuff. So. Fuck yeah. But uh, there, there was this famous, uh, famous Finnish um, um, movie, movie critic or uh, a movie mm-hmm. professional, if you will. And he said, I think he directed some movies as well. But he said that it's not a hobby until it reaches absurd proportions. And I completely agree with him. You know, <laughs> as I can tell from your your background over there you you have a hobby too yes i do i don't know it's <laughs> if it's uh if it's gotten a bit overboard like i'm realizing i need a bigger place now and um mm-hmm. with with uh that's that's when you can call it start calling it a hobby okay okay interesting <laughs> so i do that with movies like for example my all time favorite movie is i'm sure you're familiar with this because because class of 1999 you know this movie oh yeah yes definitely (laughs) so like i collect um just like oh let me see if you have it there um i collect all kinds of formats whether it's you got class of nukem high right here fuck yeah dude that's such a good and that's one of choma's street trash street trash i um the arrow the arrow release very nice oh yeah they're so nice yeah and um see see now i'm getting nervous because i want to geek out on movies but like yeah (laughs) with movies i do that like i'll I'll, um buy different vhs's from different countries different beta tapes and then the soundtrack i need on cd on vinyl like it's 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 pretty crazy and um yeah man but it's i think it's all like what one would call uh you know cultural capital you know it's something that you know you enjoy and you get a lot of out of it both both intellectually emotionally and you know sometimes even physically you know sure. listen to good music or you'll see a really good movie with a, some really powerful scene and you get these goosebumps and stuff it's uh it's a very very uh, like sort of complete thing you know 
for sure, for sure, man. I mean, oh. you you have you have horror horror tattoos and everything, oh, yeah. you know. Oh yeah. You're yeah, deep I, I mean, in the game, if you will. Very much so. Um. Yeah, dude. So I didn't know. Do you have any horror tattoos? Um. No, not that I recall, but I have a bunch of I have a bunch of music tattoos though. <laughs> okay, what 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 band tattoos do you have? Um, neurosis, obviously. Mm -hmm. I got um I got a, a misery index tour tattoo. Actually, two misery index tour tattoos. Nice. I got a I got a feastum tour tattoo. I got a I got a, uh, a rise and fall tattoo. Oh, okay. I did this shirt that had this like a. Uh, I don't know where to twist my foot. <laughs> it has this, like a, a screw. Okay, nice. And there's this is from an old Finnish hardcore band called Gauss and Cadgers. They did a split. And since I'm a singer, it's a skeleton with a uh, microphone and. Okay. You know, nice. that kind of stuff. Nice. Well, I have. I only. Oh have yeah, and then I have a. Sorry. A Nazum tour tattoo because I did merch for them in 2012. Oh, okay. Nice. Man. Yeah, that one's nice. I, I see that N popping up every once in a while, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I only have two band tattoos. I have an I Hate God tattoo. And nice. I have a Weezer tattoo. Awesome. Yeah, dude. Which, what's, what's, your, what's your favorite Weezer album? Well, the Weezer tattoo I have says In the Garage, which is off the... Okay. The blue album. First record. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, for me, That's Weezer cool. is the first two albums. The the rest. Yeah, I I agree. Fine. Yeah. The rest are fine, but the first two are very close and dear to my heart. Are you a Weezer fan? Yeah. Okay. I like the first two records. I actually, I used to work at a at a record label, mm -hmm. which I, uh, then got bought by Universal, and uh, so we would end up you know uh mingling a lot with the universal people so once i was at the universal office and i saw they had a, a kermit the frog uh a plush toy nice. with a weezer t-shirt on and i was like can i have that and they're like yeah sure we we got these as promos i was like yeah so i still have a i have a weezer kermit at my house that is such a cool promo item dude it is because you know you you saw the music video they did, yeah. You know with all the Muppets and so that was kind of you know at the yeah, same what, time. What song was that? Was that Gone Sailing or something like that? Mm, that I I, I really don't remember, but but they have amazing. Music I thought it was so cool. Yeah, 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 and I thought it was so cool because the the, the singer, you know, he's a Muppet fan. And you yeah. could tell, like, at the end of the video, when he's kind of standing there with all those Muppets, how fucking stoked and happy <laughs> he is to be there yeah. <laughs> in the same music video as all the Muppets. He's just standing there, yeah. you know, smiling, going like, oh, yeah. heaven. A hundred percent. So, so Patrick, can you tell me, how did you get into punk and hardcore? Like, what, what was uh, the send-off? Oh, well, we have to go back a long, long, long time because I actually got into, I got into music at a very, very early age. Mm -hmm. I remember, uh, I remember being five years old and uh, I got my own room at my parents' house and they also gave me my, uh, my own stereo, which was this like old sort of uh, a tabletop model where you would have the you'd have the turntable you have a cassette deck and then a, a radio like a tuner and they're all like next to each other and you know i got that in my own room and then i started going through my uh my parents they had a very modest record collection and and most of it was pretty crap too but i found stuff like um led zeppelin uriah heap Deep purple beatles um michael jackson Cher. And one of my first sort of musical memories is that we're uh, we're playing with toy cars with my dad in in the room, and we're listening to the Beatles, the Blue Collection. And mm -hmm. um, then uh, 
a few years later, like uh, my best friend at the time was a kid from next, next door who lived next door to us. And he was a few years older than me. And he would be listening to stuff like, you know, Kiss and Wasp and uh, Motley Crue and okay. stuff like that. So obviously I was like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm into this shit too. And then when I went to school, you know, I would um, I would start reading about these bands and then reading about these bands, I would find discover other bands like Iron Maiden and Venom and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then we we had Metal Hammer magazine coming to Finland, like it was it was at regular newsstands. So I would pick up Metal Hammer magazines, and then one time I would pick up this like uh, Metal Hammer special called Thrash, and that would that would that kind of changed everything because it had it had bands like Sepultura, like uh, Slayer and Anthrax, and um, and it also had this big uh, special on Earache Records nice. and all of their bands. And it was Napalm Death, Godflesh, Massacre, you know, what have you. So I was like, hmm, this sounds interesting. I, I better check this shit out. And we had, a, we had like a library bus that would come to our schoolyard once a week. And because... Uh, I was into reading and, and listening to music. I would always go to the library bus and, you know, and then one time I just went there with a list of shit and I was like, can you next week when you come, but come back, can you hook me up with this? I gave him a list of like, uh, you know, napalm death and whatnot. And they were like, all right, sure. So it was mostly earache, sure earache record stuff. That was the first, that was the first touch. Wow. of like extreme music okay and then going into and this this was like i was i was about 10 11 years old and uh i also borrowed a, a black sabbath record like the first black sabbath album from my uncle and i would tape it on a cassette and i would listen to that walking to school every morning walking back and then when i went to uh went to like after elementary school you know i went to seventh grade and all of a sudden there were these few kids from uh, a nearby neighborhood that i'd never met before but they were into the same kind of stuff that i was so you know then i would start discovering more and more like death metal bands like and they would also listen to a lot of you know punk and hardcore and that's how it kind of started off nice i've always listened to a lot of different different types of music like mm -hmm. anything from anything from ambient to noise you know and anything okay. you can cram in between okay good so music i danced bad music i know dance you know <laughs> and um <laughs> and that's how it that's how it started for me cool it did so it, it's cool because it didn't exactly come easy to, for you you know like you had to dig for it you had to you did your research. Well, I, I, actually, actually, it was relatively easy for me because I used to go to the library a lot, and we had mm -hmm. that library bus that would come to the come to our school. And um, in Finland, you have you have mandatory military service, or if you mm -hmm. don't want to go to the military, you have two options: either you, uh, either you, um, your con conscience conscientious objector which means you have to actually go to prison for six months or you do what we call uh, civil service okay and the library always had a lot of people that were doing their civil service so they would always be like long-haired dudes and and whatnot and they were basically they're like oh you're into music yeah so he would work at the music department and he would get to order stuff in Nice. So the libraries I went to, they always had like Metal Hammer and Kerrang! magazines and Thrasher. And and then they would also have like a really good selection of metal music and all kinds of different music. So I would just walk into the library and just like pick stuff up. I would go home with a stack, this thick, like all kinds of different shit and just, you know, listen to those. That's so, so cool, dude. That's so cool. That yeah, so in, in a way, it actually was really easy for me. And okay. I really enjoyed it because 
I was never into sports. I've never been like a very competitive person. And um, I had like, my social circle was not very big. Mm -hmm. So I would just, you know, delve into music and books and magazines and stuff. So, so this library, I was kind of I've... like dive in. Cool. Cause I've never heard about this whole, uh, library bus thing. Is this a, a, a Finnish thing? I don't know, but we have it here. Like the Finnish library system is very, very good. Exactly. And, so, um... so <coughs> I'm getting towards that. So, so it seems like, um, like the Finnish push a lot towards the arts, like they encourage the youth, you know, to like discover that, that side. Mm. Well, at, at least they used to. I'm I'm not really sure how it is today um, because it seems that a lot of these like youth houses and all these cultural projects have been, you know, shut down because of, you know, maybe it's it's they had to cut costs or something, you know, rampant free range capitalism has its tentacles in this like you know community community circles as well. So they've basically they're basically looking at what what's expensive and what does it give to the community and okay. like when I was a kid they they used to be like uh, youth houses in every almost every suburb you know there'd be practice spaces and there'd be discos and there'd be gigs and and whatnot but not so much anymore or maybe okay. kids just don't go to these I don't I don't know yeah okay dude. Nice. Thanks for sharing. So now please tell me about this impressive store you just opened up entitled The Other Records in Helsinki. And because, um, yeah, um, tell me the whole story because this used, you used to run a label slash pop-up store. So yeah, tell me the whole, the whole um, story. Well, well, we started this, uh, me and Jason, we started it as a um, as a distro at first and uh, a distro slash uh, cassette label. And we sort of, uh, we had this idea that one day we want to, you know, make it grow and actually become like a real record store. And um, we were doing it for like one year and we saw that, okay, people are, people are actually buying this stuff that we have. So we decided to, turn it into an official company because we didn't want to get into a situation where we've grown, you know, so big that we'd have the, you know, the officials coming like, Oh, you guys are selling, you know, records for, you know, hundreds of euros and are you paying taxes and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And we knew that we wanted to start up an actual record store one day. That's been like a shared dream we've had ever since we were, you know, teenagers ourselves and going into record stores and really dig in and shit. So then we started the company and we rented out this basement space to have our little office there. And uh, then we moved into a bigger room in that basement space. And then, you know, after a while being in that, that bigger room, we decided to, you know, make it into a pop-up store. So we bought these, like record display boxes and stuff and just put our stuff on display. Like we put t-shirts all over the walls and stuff. And then we said to people like, yeah, you can come here once a month or by appointment to come and browse. Mm -hmm. So that's, that thing started growing a little bit. And um, then the Corona hit um, in spring this year. And I, uh, my job is like I work at a warehouse in the events industry. Mm -hmm. So my job basically stopped overnight. They, uh, after, after the first announcement of, you know, these sort of uh, restrictions on events, I think I worked at the warehouse for two weeks and then I was laid off first for 90 days. And then I was giving another notice that's indefinite. So that gave me a lot of time to, you know, reflect on, reflect on my uh, <laughs> life choices and things that 
you know, make me happy. And I had a bit of a burnout last, last fall. Okay. And I was in quite bad shape for a while and uh, I was off work for a month. And then I did like a three day week for two months and started medication and, and everything. And combining that with the, uh, with the Corona, I started thinking like, man, like, do I really want to be doing like a nine to five job just to have a nine to five job and sort of be like a normal citizen? Mm -hmm. And the more I talked with my, uh, with my, uh, my doctor and my therapist about it, they said that I had this sort of what is called a um, conflict of um, conflict of values. Mm -hmm. I have this, I have this set of values in me that sort of define me as a person and it's the things that I love and the things that I love to do. And then there are these values that I think that I should have been, you know, uh, you know, uh, realizing okay. like, you know, having a steady job and et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the more I thought about it, I was like, and you know, fuck this my five shit. You know, I have a dream of starting up a record store. So maybe I should like try it once in my life. If if it fails, if if this thing goes bankrupt bankrupt, then you know, at least I tried it. Then I can say that I did it and you know move on move on to other things. Fuck yeah. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's just kind of following this dream and and you know trying to make something positive out of it for myself and also for, you know, for the Finnish, uh, Finnish extreme music community. And, uh, if I fall flat on my face doing it, then, you know, so be it. At least, At least I had a few, few months. At least I tried. Exactly. Nice. So live in the dream, baby. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> So do you, do you, now that the store has been open for some time, do you feel yourself more at peace with, with your values and all of that you were talking oh, yeah. about? Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, unfortunately it's been, we've been super busy with everything. So it means that I've been doing like really long days. Like I start at 10 in the morning and then I sit here until you know midnight. So I, I try to make it up for, for my kids, you know, <laughs> during Sundays when I'm at home, okay. but I'm pretty sure that after, after we get through, through this initial like startup thing, then, and things sort of calm down, I can go back to being a good dad as well. <laughs> of course, dude. But you know, yeah, of course, this is they're all really gonna... happy that you know, daddy has a store. <laughs> exactly. And, um, what seems really cool uh, from what I can see is like, you, not only do you sell music, you also sell movies and books. Yeah. We have some, uh, we have some like secondhand DVDs right now. And uh, mm -hmm. we have, have been trying to, uh, trying to focus on, on literature as well. For example, uh, we have this cool art book nice. called Lucifero. And nice. it's basically focused on like the idea of the devil and and you know Satan, Lucifer, in heavy metal artwork. So it has a lot of like different okay. things inside. Is is your web store up to date with everything it's, you guys carry? We're actually yeah, everything except like secondhand secondhand shirts because we have a lot of secondhand shirts. So we haven't had time to actually catalog them and price them out, okay. but I think we're gonna we're getting that to that as soon as possible, and uh, we're actually launching a new new website um, on October eighth if everything goes well. Semi from uh, Turkey used to be the singer for Sakatat. He's actually creating our new website, so I'm really really looking forward to that. It's been great working with him. He's super professional and super like on point all the time. 
Nice, dude. Yeah, because I've been, I was checking out the website and I didn't see these uh, secondhand movies. So, yeah, that's why I was asking. No, no, yeah, these are not, these are also not in the store store okay. yet, but, uh, you know, we've been thinking, we've been saying, like, maybe we should just keep them in the store to have, like, something, mm -hmm. something a little bit special here so people would, you know, come for, for that to see Makes some sense. stuff that's not on the website, but. Makes sense. I don't know. Because I just saw, um, I don't know if you're, if you know, Sergio from ACXDC, Antichrist Demon Core. He mm -hmm. just opened yep. up a yep. record store as well. So that's, oh, really? Uh, yeah, man. He just, that's uh, cool. in, in somewhere in LA, I think. Um, so yeah, that's fucking Excellent. cool. You guys are definitely living the dream. I'm, I'm, I, I, so, so there's a market for this in Helsinki? Mm hmm. Yeah, the thing is that um, Helsinki hasn't really had uh, like this type of metal store for years. There used to be a, a store called Combat Rock mm -hmm. that was more into like punk and hardcore, but they also had metal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they quit and uh, another guy bought that operation and he started a, a, a record shop called Teen Wolf that was even more focused on punk. But I guess he didn't uh, he didn't really have it together and he so for a few years it's just been a, a store called cult that sells 99% black metal oh, okay and some some Nazi shit wow so we're like yeah so fuck we're that. like uh, we're we're yeah fuck that we're trying to fill the void of everything else so we're focused on Death metal, grindcore. Yeah, exactly. Doom, thrash, like more napalm death. More uh, punk hardcore. More napalm death. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> definitely. Fuck yeah, dude. So. Yeah. And actually, speaking of napalm death, we're uh, we're putting out the new napalm death record out on tape. Uh, I saw that. That's fucking cool and impressive, man. Like, um. Yeah, it's it's very it's a huge thing for me personally. So. Exactly. I'm really stoked about that. Plus, the new record is fucking killer. I, I, I think I like this record it more than, than a couple of their, for the last couple of records, you know? This is really exactly. cool I feel I feel really bad for kind of missing out on pretty much like almost 20 years of Napalm Death. Because I used to be, when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of uh, the first three records. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, I like fear, emptiness, despair. And then when diatribes came out, I was kind of like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Words from the exit wound even more so. And I kind of, kind of, you know, almost like gave up on them. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to Enemy of the Music Business for a while. They're like, yeah, this is all right. And then maybe... Um, Time waits for no slave, and then with Apex Meat, I was kind of like, "This is actually, this is actually okay." And then when this new record, we got the, we got the, uh, the files for it. I put it on my phone, and I was, I was listening to it on my headphones, like at the gym and you know, commuting on the bus, and I was like, like "Holy!" Okay. Fuck. <laughs> has this sort of you know uh a thread through it so it's it's really really good record so then i started going back on their catalog all the way from the new record i i listened to them backwards all the way until uh, diatribes and i was like man it's it's like i discovered a new band that i really really like I, so yeah now I, i'm in the process of trying to find everything on vinyl again <laughs> right I, I totally get what you're saying because like you come from uh you 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 come from the old school napalm death you were a you were big big into those three records so so when oh, yeah. when sorry the connection is kind of shit um i totally get that happens in like um uh, um so like there's this internal debate in teething where David, the bassist, is all for mm -hmm. like 
every era of Metallica when Antonio, the guitarist, just likes early Metallica. But that's because he <laughs> lived the early Metallica. He, he, David was late to the game, so he, he likes everything. So I like all Napalm Death because I was later to the game, more like a fear emptiness era, you know? So I totally get what yeah, well, But now I found that I like even words from the exit wound. There you go. I thought it was I thought it was a great record. I was like, man, these guys were like way ahead of their time when this came out. Mm -hmm. I was still kind of hung up on that whole like harmony corruption thing. Right. And I wanted them to continue like harmony corruption, utopia banished. And the more I was listening to the back catalog, I was like, man, there's like this fucking clear thread that started all the way in on harmony corruption, utopia banished, and then continued on diatribes and, and fear empty despair and words from the exit wound. And now these last like three records that they've done are just pulling, putting together like all these parts of those records. Nice. So it's like so an am amalgamation of their entire career in these records. And it sounds so good, man. Fuck yeah. So, so back to you guys, Back to the other records releasing this on cassette, like how how do you guys go about that? I guess it's uh it's through Century Media. Yeah. Basically we started by um we started by releasing the first misery index record on tape because it was never done before. Mm -hmm. And then uh we bought licenses for um Grave Solace. Um Moon Sorrow's latest album and um, Dark Tranquility's Sky Dancer. Because we wanted to have this like sort of a, a wide spectrum of things that we release. So we wanted part of it to be like stuff that we really like old, good old stuff like Dark Tranquility and Grave. Mm -hmm. And then also like newer stuff that we like in smaller bands and, and, and whatnot. So we already had this connection with Century Media. And then uh, earlier this year, we were like thinking, okay, we got all the stuff that we've released uh, in between, like cool demos and, you know, smaller bands. And maybe we should, maybe we should hit up Century Media again and see what they have uh, available for licensing. So they sent us the list and we were browsing the list. And then we were like, Napalm Death, Throws of Joy, is this the new record? Fucking, yeah, release date, October 2020, available. We're like, really? <laughs> Nobody, Nobody's fucking licensed this yet? Should we do it? We're like, oh, duh, of course. <laughs> so we send, send, like, hey, uh, is, this, is this really available for licensing? Like, yeah, sure. So, you know, basically how it goes, you pay a licensing fee and give you a three-year license for it, you know. And we we're like, cool. <laughs> Worldwide exclusive. Awesome. Fuck we'll yeah, dude. And, and how many copies are you guys pressing of this tape? Um, well, the thing is that um, the, the licensing fee is a set amount of money and it's it's kind of like the less you print of it the more expensive it becomes like per tape so okay. um the maximum is 500 so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes right now we're doing 250 50 like in the beginning and we'll see how those shift and if, if they sell really well then then we might print another two two fifty. Nice, but and that's still kind of up in the air. Okay, and and uh, do you guys have a say in like anything? Like, if you want to like have a different, not obviously not a different cover, but if you want to put like a a sticker on it, or you want to put it in a, like a nice little pouch, can you like can you do that, or or it's set on set in stone the design. I guess I guess something some extra some of these things would have been negotiable, but to be honest, the the with 
the uh, with the licensing fee and then the production cost of the tape. Yeah. Already was high enough that if we would have wanted to do something extra, like maybe do a patch with it or put it in a pouch or, you know, anything like that, the actual cost of the item would have been so high that to for us for it to make any kind of sense for us we would have had to sell it for i don't know like 11 euros or something right and i'm not really sure if anybody wants to buy a tape for 11 euros okay gotcha gotcha so for now it's it's just like a it's basic dude. quote unquote okay tape okay good dude yeah because you have to find that balance between doing this as a labor of love and now this is your income, right? So you have to find that balance. Yeah, and I will, and, and unfortunately, there's actually zero income in this for us okay. right now. Okay. Like we are personally not making any money out of this. But I mean and the uh, store in everything, general. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it should, we want it to be our income eventually, mm -hmm. one of these days, okay. but right now we have to we have to trust on our savings and, and stuff like that gotcha so gotcha. all the money that comes into the store through the actual physical store or our web store goes directly 100 percent goes into paying rent uh electricity internet phone bill insurance you know uh we, we need to get like an alarm system here. Um, and then after that, we have some money left over and we spend it all on buying new shit for the store. Gotcha. Okay. So there's like, there's zero left over for us. And the so thing in is, Finland is that yeah. if, if a company wants to start paying salary for the people that work for the company, in this case, myself and Jason, mm -hmm. Let's say let's say we wanted to pay each other. Let's say the company would want to pay us like a thousand euros a month. Okay. And uh, that means that the company would actually have to pay uh, around like fifteen hundred euros because they have to pay all these sort of side costs and uh, um, pensions and insurances and whatnot. So the company would have to pay like fifteen hundred. Then they would pay us a thousand euros and then we would have to pay taxes and also all kinds of side costs and end up getting like 700 euros. <laughs> okay. That's gotcha. how, that's how it is in Finland. Gotcha. So yeah. it's, it's, it's really expensive for any company to pay salary for their, uh, for their employees. So that's really not an option for us. Okay. Anyways. Gotcha. So we'll, we'll see how it works out in the future. And, uh, okay. Right now, I've been just, you know, I've been selling my old, I've been selling my t-shirts and some of my records as well. Okay. And, you know, trying okay. to get some, a little bit of money from that. Smart. So, dude, talking about releasing records and stuff, um, Teething, we're about to record our new album. And mm -hmm. um, I want to know from your experience, what are the... Do you think, like, if you were, um, since you released Graveyard Earth before COVID, do you think mm -hmm. um, if you could go back in time, would you have released it either way? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to know if it's a good idea to release an album during COVID, like the pros and cons. What, what's your experience? Sorry, one second. What's no up? All right. See you later. Um, right well, the thing is, the thing is, like, Graveyard Earth played like almost six months because we just couldn't get our shit together. So I feel really bad for not, you know, getting to do it, do all that shit on time because then we would have been able to tour, you know, earlier in 2020. But as for releasing stuff right now, I mean, why not? Mm -hmm. I think people are still, people are still you know enjoying buying records and people are still you know listening to music and so the on, the only problem is that it's going to be very hard to you know promote it with shows like you have to you have to have more of an i guess like an online presence 
you know, to right. get the word out there that there's actually a record out and, you know, this is how it sounds. And I know that a lot of, a lot of bands are playing these streaming shows. And I think that's, that's a great idea. Maybe that could be like the, like the future thing of, you know, shows. If this COVID thing keeps on going for years and years, then, you know, I think everybody has to, or have, or they have to start doing streaming shows. I mean, okay. we did one and I thought it was, I thought it was kind of fun. Oh, I wasn't aware. It took a lot of pressure one. out of like trying. Yeah, 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 we did. And it took a lot of pressure out of like trying to figure out what to say between songs because we didn't say anything. We just, we just had like noise in between. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because it would have been stupid trying to, it would have been stupid, you know, talking to an empty club or saying yeah. like, hey, anybody watching at home? Thanks, guys. And it, it, yeah. it would have just felt weird. But you can, so I think, figured, it, like, fuck that. I think you can play around and have fun with it. Like, for example, if, if I were to do that, like, kind of like stage off, stage dive off your fucking couch, you know, or fucking. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know? <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. But like for me personally, it, it just, I, I wasn't really comfortable with the right. idea. I totally get trying it. Trying to totally speak to, it. trying to speak to an empty club with just like two dudes with cameras. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I totally get it. Totally get it. Maybe we need to. So we were playing in like a. Yeah, yeah. We were playing in like a circle, you know. We were facing each other, mm -hmm. so we were kind of playing, playing to to each other, and you know, we didn't we didn't really speak. I didn't speak anything between songs. I just like, I just did noise, and uh, we're actually still waiting to get the material for that because we wanted to uh, we wanted to put it out on YouTube or or maybe like release the audio as like a live record, but. Still waiting. Still waiting. Wake up, whoever yeah, man. is it, sleeping on that. It's it's been, a, yeah, man. It's been a few months. Okay. Um, dude, are you, are you, are you friends with the Ravage Ritual guys? Yeah. Okay. What? Well, yes, what's, I am. Cause, I, yeah, our 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 first tour. Um, in Helsinki and Sweden was with them and we, we bonded really close but I kind of lost touch do you do you know what's up with them like if they're if... I have no clue like I'm um, okay. like when you say friends it's not like we are you know friends friends like okay. we know each other and uh, you know uh, but um, I I have no clue I I think I recall them you know uh, going into studio a while yeah. back Okay. So I, I guess they're uh, they're uh, releasing something. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> the okay. guitar player has gotten really big. Like he's been he's been fucking working out a lot. Oh he's, yeah, yeah, he's I saw him, man. Like fuck yeah, dude. He's like fucking buff and like uh, he uploads all these videos like lifting weights. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um. Um. What about Famine Year? Is that your other band? Is Famine Year still around? I think not, right? No, we we quit in in 2018. Okay. So what happened was that um, both myself, our well, myself, our bass player, and our drummer, we all got kids in 2013. Mm -hmm. well, the okay. same year. And then, like, you know, when you have kids, you know, your sort of priorities change and the way you spend your time changes. And uh, and also, you know, I guess our our drummer was not really into like he didn't want to he didn't want to like do tours or whatever. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was more comfortable with playing shows in Finland and laying you know, low, doing, yeah. like, weekend shows and whatnot. Yeah, laying low. Mm -hmm. And uh it just went that way. Like there was, there was a long time that we didn't really do anything. We just did a few shows per year and we had all these like songs written and uh, we actually recorded like the basic tracks for them, but then everything just kind of, we just couldn't get it moving. So then one day he just, he just went like, all right, it's been 10 years. This is it. It's about time we quit. And everybody else in the band was like, uh, okay, I guess yeah. so. Okay, so it was kind of a, so an organic process. We did a few, like, 
yeah, it was an organic process. And then we just did a few farewell shows and uh, our last show was in Tallinn and we were completely shit faced. And uh, <laughs> I remember we, uh, we, we started, we started the last song of the set of our last set ever. And, you know, our drummer counts to four and everybody starts at the, at a different, different hit. <laughs> Right. And I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> so I grabbed the uh, I grabbed the bass player and the guitar players, uh, the necks of their guitars, and I was like, "Stop! Stop! Stop! This is not how it ends. We have to start the song over again. Fucking come on! Last song of the last show of the fucking, you know, let's together, do it again. Come on, yeah, dude. <laughs> we yeah we 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 got our shit together for that one last song. And, Good. And then. Uh, we continued getting shit faced, and after that, after that night, myself and the bass player, we were like, "Dude, we're like super hungover," and we're like, "Oh man, this is this is not what forty year old forty forty year olds should be doing. Like, should we try to get should we try to like not drink for a year or so? I'm like, yeah, let's try that." And he's still not drinking anything, and. And uh, I still I still have a few beers every now and then, but I think after between the summer of 2018 and 2019, 2019 to today, I've been drunk like maybe three or four times, okay. and I haven't been like super drunk. I've I've only had like one you know hangover or two hangovers, and okay, you know, I've Good. I've taken sort of a new approach. To beer I, I try to like enjoy it a little bit right. more instead of just like pounding it because okay. you know when i became a dad when i became a dad i really couldn't i had a really hard time trying to find time to you know go out and and you know have beers with my friends so i got to do that like five times a year and every time i did that it was like full on all in fucking blackout drunk you know mm -hmm. completely wasted and I was like, I, I don't think this is fun anymore. I don't think this is what I should be doing. Right. <laughs> so, 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 okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so what, what was that, what was that moment that where, where it hit you, where you're like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, did, did you, was there a fuck up or something? Or it was just like, nah, I, I'm, I'm over this. Uh well, I mean, <laughs> there was this one night when I was when I was out with Jason. I think we were we were seeing uh, Carpenter Brute. You know that one? Yeah, for sure. This sort of uh, synthwave band. Super cool. And we were staying at the we were staying at the old office. We were like we were doing Jaeger shots and drinking beers and smoking and and then we got to the venue. And I remember just being super drunk at the venue. And uh, at one point I just decided like, yeah, man, I got to leave. And I have, a, I have a kind of a recollection of being at the coat check waiting for my jacket and somebody kind of bumps into me like their back of their head hits me in the face. And the next thing I remember, I'm looking for a taxi, like kind of like with one eye closed. And, and then my next recollection is throwing up from the taxi door door and the driver's like, do you want to take your card and get the fuck out? And, and the next day it was kind of like, and that, that was not a fun night. Yeah. I, I thought that I was having fun, but instead I wasn't. Right. And then pretty soon after that was the, uh, was the, uh, the last family show. And then, you know, then me and my bass player, we were like sitting in, sitting in the, uh, you know, the hotel lobby, like sweating and going like, oh man, it's still going to be a few hours till we get home. This is horrible. Maybe, maybe we should try something else for a while. Yeah. When you were saying that, the maybe we should try something else. I thought you guys were talking about like, yeah, I think we can't play like fast music anymore. But no, you're talking about like fucking get, <laughs> getting insanely wasted. Okay. For yeah. me, that, that, that moment of, I've never partied as hard as you, but I think a big change for me was uh, when I got a dog. 
you know i know mm-hmm. it's obviously not as big as a responsibility as as you with kids but like i was living alone of course it is yeah yeah of but course I, it is you're taking care of a living being man well there you go That's... but so it was i was living alone with my dog bingo and he depended mm. on me for absolutely everything i can't go fucking party for 12 hours like i you know no. i so i can't just like you need to feed him every now and then and you need to take him out for walks and yeah. you know and you uh, can't be all plastered when you get back home you gotta like take care of that that guy yeah and it was that feeling of like i remember being partying it was like one o'clock two and i'm like guys i'm going home and they're like no come on let's party mm. and i was like yeah but i kind of feel like hanging out with my dog you know like i miss him so yeah so there you go. that does so i, I mean, recommend it, yeah it's 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 always an important important sort of um a moment in a person's life when you have to start caring about you know someone else than yourself mm-hmm. and it, it definitely changes your priorities and it changes the way you feel about you know yourself and it changes the way you might start feeling about other people and and other living beings in general for sure because it's 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 really crazy like you know having a dog for the first time and it, it's like having a dog or two two dogs now has taught me so much about this sort of like uh, you know, unconditional love yeah. that they have towards you and the sort of, and this sort of like the way they depend on you and the way like also taught me a lot about myself, like how I behave, you know, when I get angry and it's like sometimes when I get angry with the dog and I do like, I, I scream and go like, no, mm-hmm. you know, you can see from the dog, like, puts his tail between his legs and he looks at you and goes like please don't kill me yeah and you're like and I, and I go like holy fuck like I've, I've I must be really scary yeah you know, when I do that yeah. and I like and what the you same said. thing with kids and the same thing with kids you know you can't just like you can't just you know shout at them because they're they're gonna be scared and I don't want to be I don't want to be this like scare, scary big thing for them. You know, I want to be, I want to be somebody that they can depend on and they can trust and, you know, that will give them, you know, security and love. For sure, dude. That's, that's a, that's a good way of handling life responsibilities, kids, whether it's kids, dogs. I wasn't aware you had two dogs. Wait. Okay, I think. Sorry, you're kind of you're you're okay. kind you're kind of cutting up now. It's it was it was getting all weird. Okay, let me Uh-oh, do. There's the uh the rainbow the the circling rainbow. Whoa. What's that? Can you see me? I can see you. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, the actually you've been you've been uh you've been still for a very very long time. Okay. Okay. But okay. <laughs> I've heard you still in. <laughs> so I've been talking to a still image of you. But okay. Okay. Now well, we're moving like super fast and <laughs> okay. tell me when everything is back to normal. Who okay. knows when everything is back to okay, normal? Okay, okay. I mean right, now now, now it's getting back. Yeah. Okay. It's getting back. We're all here. Right. Cool. We're yeah. here. Yeah, all good. Um, okay, so I'm guessing you didn't hear what I said. What I was saying was, um, mm, uh, no. no, you have a, you have a very positive and good outlook. I think you're probably a great dad. How's, how's dad life? Uh, well, it, it's, you know, like I said before, it's the, the best of times and the worst of times. Okay. It is, it is literally the best thing that that's ever happened to me, but it's also been, like super, super, sometimes it's been super hard and super stressful because for example, my, my uh, younger daughter for the first, I'd say for the first two and a half years of her life, she slept maybe 
I'm going to go, I'm going to say positive. I'm going to stay positive and say that she slept 20 full nights within wow. two and a half years. Otherwise wow. she would wake up every single night at least once, usually three to five times. Wow. So Was sometimes this... like, yeah. Sorry. Is that, did she have like night terrors or anything like that? Or just had trouble sleeping? No. In condition? No, it, no, it's, it, it was not night terrors. I mean, at fr sometimes we thought it was because she sounded hysterical, but that was only like a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And we actually did go and see a doctor about it. And basically what the doctor told us was that some kids sleep and some kids don't. I mean, she's still, even, even to this day, she still like rolls around a lot in her sleep and she talks in her sleep and sometimes she can, you know, shout mm -hmm. something like we can wake up in the night and she'd be like, mom, dad. And we can hear from her voice that she's not really awake. Okay. She's just doing it for, for whatever reason. Okay. Okay. But it was a very, very stressful two and a half years because at the same time, we also had to sort of adapt to this thing where we had, where we have two kids and I started working at a, a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. Since then I, w I've, I was a freelancer for 10 years. You know, I could pretty much schedule my own life, but then all of a sudden, you know, I had a set schedule five days a week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, you know, being really being a smart person, I also started my own company at the same time, you know, <laughs> as if things weren't hard enough already. And Okay, so overwhelming and, uh, times. Really overwhelming times. What time do you but wake up, dude, in general? I seven o'clock. Okay. Okay. Cause Every I've been morning. It's I've, even without an alarm. I've like, I've just, my inner clock has shifted. Okay. No matter what time you go to sleep, it's seven o'clock. Pretty much like, okay. Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. Cause like I've been one night like the, the, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, I, um, sorry to cut you off. Just, I've been pursuing it. It sounds stupid because if you want to do something, just do it. But my goal is to eventually at some point have a routine where I wake up at five and I, I get the ball rolling. And by nine o'clock, I've already done a lot of stuff because I know people that do that and uh, very productive people. They, they get shit done. You know? Yeah, they, they say there's all these books written about these sort of like very successful people you know, however you want to dis define mm -hmm. success is that, you know, a lot of these people, they literally wake up at four or five in the morning and then by noon, they're already like done a bunch of shit and then they can just do, do whatever else. And then they go to sleep at like early. Yeah. You know, that's, if it, if it works for them, that's great. But I've always been more of a nocturnal person like okay. I, th I find myself being more productive like in the evening and at night that's usually when I have my most sort of creative moments when I you know I write right. lyrics or do stuff on photoshop or or whatever and um, it's that's just the way some people are mm -hmm. some people wake up early and others don't but th my kids have sort of you know they've tuned my inner clock so that no matter how long i stay up at night i pretty much wake up at 7 a.m okay and, uh, well, well well my kids my kids and and my uh my nine to five job okay gotcha, so, gotcha. even without an alarm like the night before we opened uh night before we opened the store we sort of had this like a, a pre-party thing with jason and our, our mutual friend and we stayed up until like one or two and i didn't realize I, I didn't remember at the time that the next morning was like me alone with the kids because my wife was going out of town for uh for uh, for work mm -hmm. and i literally wake up seven thirteen in the morning automatically 
hung over and I'm like look look to my side I'm like okay she's not there I'm like oh fuck it's my morning I have to take care of the kids I have to get Elsa to kindergarten I have to take Siri to school and then we open the store at noon fuck <laughs> this is a disaster and then I just like get going yeah <laughs> yeah yeah to, that's what i'm gotcha, saying gotcha. E- even though even though i was out you know drinking and yeah yeah i had a tiniest bit of hangover i still yeah. woke up at seven o'clock like clockwork dude you you gotta get you gotta get the ball rolling dude. so yeah I, th- i think um we're almost getting towards the end okay so like i i want to oh. i want to oh i want to talk about um yeah about your insane record collection okay so you, you said you're a big avid collector of uh, neurosis autopsy is there any other like holy mm-hmm. grails i mean like bands where you have like absolute there's like stuff you need absolutely everything of because even even like i've um i've sent you several teething packages throughout the years You know, I mean, I, it's yeah. like you, you, you collect from everywhere, you know, whether it's big or small. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I'm still missing one teething release. What's that? And that's the, um, uh, it was, it was the lathe you put out, um, an open wow. letter to my friend. Yeah, dude. That's See, the fucking, that's the only only one I don't have. <laughs> I only have And I remember begging you for it like if you have an extra copy please send it over and you're like I only have archive copies so Yeah, that's yeah. understandable but the hunt is on. Okay. And uh I really like like that's that's probably the best thing is that you know not having everything you want but still, you know, yes. to paraphrase Motorhead like the chase is better than the catch. <laughs> exactly. Or to paraphrase, there's always something to look forward. To. Yeah. Or to paraphrase, uh, hey, Breed, um, satisfaction is the death. Satisfaction of is the death of desire. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, but see, I fucking you know, that that was ridiculous. That that um that last cut, the the seven inch of another open letter to my best friend. That's mm. I I hate pressing such short runs. That was a That was the label's idea. And I it's kind of like I feel it's unfair to like a lot of people. It's like either you're really clo- close to the label or to the band. If not, you might get fucked, you know? Like if you're because it was only I think 66 or or 50. It was only 50. That's ridiculous, you know? Like the band's already going to keep like eight copies for themselves. Or something mm. like that. So, or, or no, uh, yeah, it depends. Mm. Anyways, um, is, is that an Alfred E. Neumann tattoo on your, yes, uh, on your right arm? Yes. Respect. Respect. You're you. That's you would, amazing. Yeah, you would expect. You're the second person that has recognized this. You would expect like more people to recognize this. You know? I used to read Mad Magazine religiously when I was a kid. Because exactly. we had it in Finnish in Finland, it was published in Finnish, so I would read those like tons of them, and they're mm-hmm. still like some of my favorite stuff. Likewise, I th- I it think still it makes me laugh to this day. Exactly, and they're still going strong, Mad Magazine. So to to the listeners, really? yeah, to the listeners who aren't watching this, because this is mostly going to be audio interview. Uh, Petri was just checking out my Mad Magazine tattoo, and um. Yeah, um, still going strong, Mad Magazine, dude. And um, mm, likewise, like it's cool. been, I think like a big part of my um, education has been uh, my my sense of humor comes a lot from Mad Magazine, you know. So, so me yeah. too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you said that this was going to be mostly uh, mostly audio. Yeah, this is. Me- I mean, I'm gonna upload this on YouTube. You're gonna be able to see the video if you want, but this is mostly going to be for um, either people on Apple Music or Spotify just to like listen to. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Because yeah. um, cool. do you listen to podcasts? Um, 
No, not really. Okay. Um, I just I just mostly listen to music and um and audio books. Okay. So uh, this this whole podcast thing has been something that I've been getting into. Like mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be checking out your podcasts, and uh, I've been wanting to check out um, uh, Elis from uh, from the Arson Project. Yes. Yeah. 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 With Wheelmush Productions, he's he's been doing some really really cool stuff. Yeah. And he, um, yeah. There was another one that um, that I was really interested in. Somebody, some seen person, but I guess okay. I forget who it was. I don't know. I'm I'm uh, I'm unaware. So like, yeah, this is pretty much just keeping keeping busy during COVID, you know. And I think this is a good excuse mm. to reconnect with with friends. Like I feel like Petri, unless you and me like play a show together, or I'm playing your town, or you're playing my town we might not have this like quality time. So I think this is a good excuse to like catch up. That's true. And it's, and, and it's usually like, it's usually so brief that it's very hard to, yeah. Yeah. Very hard to like, you know, connect more, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I've been like, I don't know if you've been checking out our, uh, our thanks lists, but uh, we're, uh, we've been constantly, I ha- you have I don't recall if 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 nothing comes to mind it means I didn't read the thanks list why cuz on the, on your elab- elaborate what am i missing here um basically ever since the split okay uh we've been always trying to hint that we really 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 want to tour with you guys Oh. So you'll you'll always find a little message in there. <laughs> oh shit, I'm going to go back to Graveyard Earth, dude, for sure. I think yeah, we've always been we have we have to do it. We have well, of, of course, of course we want to do it. Like um it's just yeah. um, I think we're, you, we're... you guys were the first band I think you guys were the first band that hit us up saying like hey uh let it would be cool to do a split with you guys. And we're like yeah, it actually would be a super cool thing, and we've had a few. We've had a few since. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got one from uh, Department of Correction and uh, a couple of others, but like the time has never been right mm-hmm. to do them, or we didn't have the money to put it out, or or whatever. Right. So we we str- we feel this very strong uh, kinship to you guys, and yeah, we really for appreciate sure. you know you guys asking and of course the the whole story of. The whole story about that split was like, you remember Daniel Maganto that played in Teething for a bit? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed at his place on the on the Kill the Client tour. There you go. So he, um, I remember when I remember talking to him and I was like, oh, uh, Teething, we want to put out a split, but I don't know who to put it out with. I was thinking about maybe talking to Petri for to do um, Famine Year, and he was like. Mm. He was like, "Famine, you you should you should do it with Feastem," and my reaction was mm. like, "Oh, Feastem, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna tell us to fuck off. They're too big for us, you know." He's like, "What do you?" He's like, "No, no, no, dude, just talk to them. I'm sure they'll be down." So that's how it all came up. All right, and <laughs> I need to stop you there. Fe- you you call Feastem big? Wait, where <laughs> is this coming from? Because <laughs> what was this? I don't know when we first <laughs> talked about this. Was like. 2014 maybe i don't know yeah because it, it came out in 2015 right so at the well at the time like we were still like a new fresh band but you guys had put out a lot of releases on like cool labels you guys uh toured toured but you guys had yeah. done a lot more than we did that's at least how how we saw it it's interesting to see it how you know like different points of view but that's how what and i remember oh, yeah, for, I for me it just was seems like, like yeah sorry well for, for me it's like i've always had this sort of uh maybe it's a finished thing but i've always kind of felt that you know if we're not if we're not universally loved and invited to play you know every festival and every show and do every tour with every band then like then I always get this feeling like, ah, fuck, nobody gives a shit about us. 
We just, yeah. we're, we're a fucking, and we, we really are. We're, we're a, I think we're a small time, you know, just like funk, some grindcore band. <laughs> yeah, well, so, I, I mean, I, I mean, don't, I, I still, I still think that, you know, we're, we're, we're more like, we're more like, uh, I don't know. I think sometimes I think that people don't really think of us like a, like a, what you would call maybe a, a true grind band. Maybe oh. we're more like a false grind. <laughs> as as well, stupid as it sounds, you know? Well, we are both Feastum and Teething. I think we're just the evolution of grindcore. It's not 1988 anymore, you know? Like what we've, I mean, we're just a fresh take on grindcore. I think. I think we're just like, I think we're just fast, loud bands. Exactly. I only, I only try to use these. I only try to use these sort of, uh, like genres or whatever you want to call them. I only try to use them when I try to, when I try to uh, describe a band to someone. Right. Like I would say, you know, they're they're a nice mix of hardcore and and grind and death metal for example right because that will give the person like it will give the person sort of like a framework to put the band in and to process it themselves and they're going to be like oh so it probably sounds like this and when, when you start saying stuff when when people start saying shit like oh you know true grind or false grind or whatever it's just to me it's just complete bullshit you know yeah it's, it's ridiculous it's, it's yeah. fast music it's fast music there's fast and loud music and it's either either you like it or you don't like it mm -hmm. good music i dance no good music i know dance <laughs> 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 to me it's to me it's that simple exactly like, i don't i don't give a fuck otherwise for sure, for sure. <laughs> and um Part of my conversation with Ellis from Arson Project and Birdflesh was was this whole thing, true, false, grindcore. In, yeah, yeah, in, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, a thing about Feastum, I don't know if you guys realize this, but you guys are a bit, you guys are intimidating because of how fast you are. So I think that's also why yeah. we were like, whoa, whoa, we can't do a split with Feastum. They're too, like, they're, really fast you know it's like it's kind of like it's kind of like i can't ask that girl huh? she's too pretty you know like <laughs> well that you know that's our thing you know yeah. we don't I, I guess we don't know how to do anything else it's it's sort of like i'm not a really good i'm not really good at bowling you know when i bowl it's usually like i try to throw it as 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 hard as I can and just do it right. directly straight ahead and aim for the aim for the sweet spot to try to knock everything down. And I think that's kind of the same way with Feastum. You know, we're not very we're not very refined or anything. We're just like full on oh, straightforward. Okay, interesting. You said you said I sorry, I didn't understand. You mean bowling. Like like bowling, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bowling. I thought okay, okay. Dude, that's such an interesting like comparison slash metaphor for what grindcore is like just aim for the middle yeah, and go really and throw the ball the big round yeah it's heavy it, ball it's, throw it's it like, really it's like power yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's power so bowling that's so good you know my friend my friend <laughs> Chus maestro uh he compares grindcore he's he's a grindcore nerd like us he compares grindcore to Chihuahua, like we are Chihuahuas. Like people see us on the street, <laughs> and we're just like small and like, rawr, rawr, rawr. and it's like, oh, at yeah, first you're like, like, you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At first, like people are like, oh, scary, and then you're like, ah, oh, that's just stupid small dog, whatever, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You give him a treat. You give him a treat. <laughs> yeah. Feed him a little bit, and he, he's gonna <laughs> jump on your lap and give you a big kiss, and you know. Exactly, <laughs> dude. So. Talking about Feastum, I, I I would like, if, do you have any like wow Feastum moments? Like for example, has like when you played with 
like maybe someone from this band you really love uh, wore your a feast em shirt while while playing a show. You know, one of those wow moments. Like, oh my god, I never thought mm. this would have happened. There, there's so many because because mm. we're so fast and amazing. <laughs> no, 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 because we don't really, or, or I personally, I don't really expect too much. Mm -hmm. from from these things like I'm I have this sort of like a Homer Simpson approach to it like when you set your expectations as low as possible <laughs> it's really it's really difficult to become disappointed you know exactly okay, okay. so anytime anytime something 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 like that happens like let's let's say we're let, okay one of those always like playing at obscene extreme it's a wow moment you know, there's people there and they're into it and there's a pit going on and people seem to enjoy it. That's always like, fuck, wow, I, I thought nobody would show up and here they are. Yeah. But also, um, anytime, I see, anytime I see a band photo, like any band photo, and somebody's wearing a Feastum shirt, I'm always like, fuck, that's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And um, and then um, Dirk Verburen, who uh, who plays drums in Megadeth, he's mm -hmm. a huge underground music fan, and he posted on when he he ordered our vinyl of um, our previous record, he ordered it from our Bandcamp, and he was like he actually did like an Instagram post where the record is spinning on his turntable, and he posted it saying like yeah fuck yeah fucking finish grindcore feast them yeah. That's so like, sick, dude. Fuck. Holy fucking shit. Yeah. And then he uh then he invited me to, you know, uh, sing in one of those Ben C tracks that he put out recently. And then um I I happened to saw like one conversation where Shane Embury was like, "Yeah, feast them. Yeah, they're a great band." Like these are these are the kind of things where I go like, "Fuck, that's that actually just happened. Holy shit. Hold me for I might faint. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Like <laughs> yeah, those moments, like your mind goes cloudy, like everything starts blurring. You're like, wait, what? You know, like yeah, I love man. that. That's kind of like the, that feeling when you're crate digging and you find that record that you've mm. been wanting since you were like 16 and you, you pull it out and you're like, yeah, and it's like everything goes blurry and you're like, wait, what? Yeah, and you start it's like holding 12 on euros. <laughs> fucking yeah. really exactly that that's that's the hunt you know and you know what's yeah man do you have a person to 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 share those moments with like i mean of course between the band you guys like oh, my oh God, yeah blah, 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 blah. but um, with, with like your wife can, like do you do you go up to her and tell her oh my god check out this picture you know like so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. totally Totally, I do that, and uh, I share that stuff with Jason as well. Fuck yeah! And um, it's uh, otherwise, like you know, to my to be honest, like most of most of my friends are not in the in the music scene, if mm -hmm. you will. They're more like they're more like like-minded people that you know share the same kind of music taste that I am, but not like you know they don't really play in bands or anything. They're just like hang out with, and people. It was a, it was a, so um, they don't really care about these things, you know. Like I said, like oh, I, I saw a band picture. Somebody was wearing my band shirt, and they're like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Likewise, so. like most of my friends are not like, are not band dudes or anything. So. I feel like I'm I'm boiling up all of like these things inside that no one cares about. Well, my, I'm lucky enough my my girlfriend's super cool and I can like geek out on all this stuff mm. and she's super interested. But my friends are yeah. usually like normal people. So if I'm like, oh my god, check out yeah. this awesome sticker on my vinyl, like they'll be like, what? Yeah, <laughs> we we just got a cool review in that magazine. Oh, all right, yeah. whatever, <laughs> okay, bro. Dude. Exactly. But that's but that's the thing, you know. We're we're friends. We're friends because 
we connect with other things like we have history together and we also happen to like the same music but you know other than that you know, they yeah they, is super important we're not we're not fr- we're not friends because we play in bands we both been playing bands where we're like scene friends but we're friends because there's something else there and that that is like super important yeah, for sure. That I think sharing a similar sense of humor is super important, and especially oh, yeah. like um, I like when when you hang out with the same friends for a long time, you develop your own sense of humor. You know? I think we're kind absolutely, of- and the same thing goes. <laughs> Are we good? Is going like, I'm doing good. Doing the robot thing. I think we're good now. Though. Yeah, I think the audio was uh, yeah. getting a little, little, little bit crazy there. Okay. But yeah, and and the same thing with, especially like with your bandmates. Like I've, uh, you know, when I, when I joined Feastem, they already had this like a set sort of mindset and this sense of humor. <laughs> and I kind of walked in, went like, "Okay, <laughs> these guys are kind of funny." <laughs> and as time went on, we sort of, I think, we gelled really well, and we we totally like share this most absurd and yeah. stupid sense of humor. And yeah, you know, touring with those guys is like fucking best thing ever. Exactly. And we've we've been in this. I I've been with them for. <laughs> Well, this is this is my eleventh year in Feastem already. So, wow, I've uh, I've, I've known them for quite a long time. It's that's, crazy to think about it. You know? Exactly, and that's that's a lot of times not to get cheesy, but when you get the whole question like, "Do you think you're successful?" When when you can share these stories, when well, I can about like how what a special friendship and bond you've created together. Like, of course, that in itself is a success, you know exactly exactly and the and the uh, the thing that you have you've been giving this you've been given this chance to to actually you know express yourself through music and lyrics and then and then through that you know have the opportunity to actually like travel a bit and yeah. meet people and see places and you know have this connection with with you know people that think about the world the same way you do and they like the same kind of music and to me like one of the coolest things uh, is to think about you know for example the you know the middle ages Mm -hmm. when you had these uh you have these traveling musicians i forget what they're called um uh, library bus Sorry? Library bus? They're called library bus? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, there were I I I really need to get like a I really need to get a copy of Asterix in front of me and then I would find the gotcha. word for that. What okay. the, what that traveling musician is. But you know, Europe Europe has this, you know, centuries centuries and centuries old tradition of people traveling around, you know, the country and other countries playing music and having having a place to getting a place to sleep and food on the table just for you know being there and providing entertainment Mm -hmm. to other people so that to me is like the most sort of uh beautiful idea about it is (laughs) is sort of being being a part of this like sort of like a traveling musician Yes, tradition. dude. Yes, yeah. I love it. That's um, it's very rewarding. I love just like group activities, you know, like when I was a kid, mm. I wanted to be or part of the Ghostbusters or part of like a, a SWAT team, you know, just like that, that whole like collective effort. So that's kind of like when you're in a band, it's like, and we all carry our weapons, you know, like you have a microphone, you have <laughs> a bass, you know, so it's, it's a very cool <laughs> yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can be like the four four caballeros and exactly the four caballeros, dude. So, mm. um, 
uh before we i before we finish like is there anything else you'd like to um elaborate on anything any any um, i don't know i mean this this has been a really really yeah. really nice chat we've had here for sure thank you for um, for, for, for I, I was really i, I go yeah? ahead sorry go ahead you go ahead yeah at first uh, at, at first i was I mean, thank you for asking me to do this. This has been super fun. But to be honest, like I was really worried that I I would have a hard time of like trying to find uh, trying to find something something to say. But it's been it's been super sort of super comfortable and uh, and uh, easy to to have this chat. So I really really appreciate it. Thank you so much I, for uh, for asking me to do this. Of course, I. That that's the whole idea. It's just two friends shooting the shit, talking, you know, whether it's records mm. or your new store or being a dad. So for sure, thank you yeah, so yeah, much yeah. for for you made it. You made it really easy, you know. It's it's not that easy Thanks. scheduling Thanks. time with people. So, so fuck yeah, dude. Well, yeah, it's it it has been a, a bit of a challenge. I mean, we had to reschedule this once already. So yeah, but I, I'm I'm uh because the whole idea to this, I wanna release three episodes at once i don't want to just i also want to see if um if i'm able to pull this off so I, i'm just seeing mm -hmm. how 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 everything's flowing um um mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's going well so i'll for sure I'll, I'll make sure i send this over you know as soon as it's excellent it's posted okay Betty. i really hope to get to i really hope to get to do um um the uh Torre Lodones uh, crate diggers with you one day, dude. That would be your this. These videos were made for people like you, you know. But but yeah, man, I love it. I've... Yeah. So whoever's um listening to this and is not aware, I have this like YouTube channel called Torre Lodones Crate Diggers, mm. where touring bands just the next morning before they head off to the next city, um, they um. Uh, look through the record collection or the movie collection and just talk about the, they pick up, they pick out uh, a special record or a special movie for them and talk about it for a bit. So I'll make sure whenever you're here, Betty, you do both the record and the movie. Cause I know you're a bit, okay. Before we leave any movie recommendation. Um, I watched a really, really good movie the other night called Arkansas. Okay. It's, um, it's um i think chris hemsworth plays the leading role okay. and it's about these um these sort of um drug de drug dealers in the south of uh south of america i thought that was really cool um nice what else what else have i been watching lately Arkansas. um oh you have to see if you haven't seen it yet you have to see um um Fucking Dan the the movie that Danny Glover did. Um, Danny Glover. Oh, I, I, I even forget the title. Title. It's 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 by it's it's they're they're in this call center. Sorry to bother you. Oh. That's what it's called. Fuck! I'm trying to write. This it's down. about. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. It's, it's about, about a yeah. Sorry. Sorry to bother you in Arkansas, and sorry to bother you is about a uh, is about a call center for mm -hmm. some nameless corporation and uh the workers at the call center um they they do like a revolt or a, a mutiny and uh i don't want to spoil anything else but it is a really really cool movie i really really thoroughly enjoyed it nice and it's danny glover i i i, I haven't seen him in a lot of stuff yeah. lately so that's gonna be nice to to see him again then. yeah um, then I watched um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay. That was a that was a really cool one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I really like Quentin Tarantino films. Likewise. Um, I think don't you, I talk about this with friends? I think he's like, whether you like him more or less, he's the director of our generation. Like everyone is aware when his movie is out. Everyone you've. I think I've seen more. Yeah, he, of his he's definitely recently. one of those. Yeah, he, he, he. I think 
him and and what's what's the guy's name who did the the new one Tenet? I haven't seen it yet, but oh, I don't know. Huh? Who's that? Uh, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he did Inception and okay. uh, I think like one of the Dark Knight movies and. Okay, that's true. He, that's he's true. also like one of those one of those directors that you know everybody knows when the new Christopher Nolan movie is out. Right. And, uh, right. And he's oh. he's great with this. oh, in a Spanish film that I watched on Netflix, Ooh. The Platform. Ah, okay. Yes, I've seen this one. The platform. Okay. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. I thought it was great. I thought it was okay. I thought it was okay, but to mm -hmm. to each his own or her own. Um, but yeah, I t I totally get why someone would uh, really dig that movie. I thought it was okay. Mm. Um, yeah. I did like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a lot. I really like Tarantino. Um, I'm not that. What much have you watched lately? Um, like dude, something you could really, really recommend. Yeah. First thing that comes to mind is last year, a German movie called the golden glove. Oh, I just watched it recently. It was fucking awesome. Dude. That's like the most really good. So raw, so disgusting. So like you want to show everything is ugly movie. in that movie. Exactly. Everything is ugly. The and, people, the places, yeah. the events, everything is just ugly. Have you seen any pictures of the of the uh, the leading actor without yes. his uh, makeup? Yes, amazing. Like, amazing. What the fuck? Yes. And um, actually, because as you can see, I'm a big like movie collector. Um, many times I mm. buy these movies just because I want to watch the extra features. So I bought mm -hmm. Holding Glove on Blu-ray, hoping there was like a bunch of like, a lengthy making of and I pop it in and it's a fucking mm -hmm. two minute making of so that stuck out because I, I really wanted to I thought the whole movie was like beautifully shot the acting was amazing the makeup's amazing mm -hmm. overall True. like that's that's my cup of tea when it comes to like cinema it's like 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 Henry yeah. Porter of a serial killer kind of film you know oh yeah the character the classic. studies yeah whether it's it mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily have to be a serial killer whether it's like Mm. I want a character study where like you see how the character it's a character driven movie nothing's really going on but he's going him or her is going crazy and crazy so a classic uh, example mm. of this is Taxi Driver or even the Joker movie oh yeah you know oh yeah oh yeah definitely yeah yeah so that, that that's my those were both like yeah. Joker was really good like I thought it was I thought it was almost like uh, it would be very easy to say that it was sort of like a commentary on the time that we live in right now. For sure. Like a and political movie, if you will. For sure. I, I thought it was a overall great movie. Like, mm. um, yeah, I mean that, what, what, what can we say that hasn't already been said about that movie, but, and has like, this is true. Total twist that you're like, I can't believe they just put that in like a mainstream Hollywood movie. Like, wow. Oh, yeah. You know? so. And also uh, one final recommendation. One of my, uh, sure. my all-time favorite uh, films is Slither. Ah, fuck yeah, dude. That's so Have cool. It? Yeah, of course. Fucking Slither. This is um, James Gunn, right? Yeah. That was yeah. like his... Uh, one of his first like feature films before he became this like big time director. Yeah, I, I that it that's so a fucking funny man. But Slither is loosely based on Night of the Creeps, don't you think? Yeah, kind of. I mean, yeah. the creatures are very yeah. similar. Yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. with that is that um, my the first time I was uh I was working I was doing merch was for uh, Misery Index in two thousand seven, mm -hmm. and I would. Uh, I actually bought that DVD on that tour, you know, just, just like, it was like, Oh, this looks fun. Well, I'll check it out. <laughs> and we would watch that movie like a dozen times on that tour. We nice. would memorize like lines from it and just fucking laugh our asses off. For and sure. It's still like, still one of, one of those things that I never, ever get tired of. It's just full of these fucking great one liners and, gory stuff and you yeah know, it's, it's just funny shit going on it has that nice balance because james gunn comes from a 
trauma background. It has that mm. nice balance of like trauma, but you can definitely see he's like, he thinks bigger picture. Like, oh, yeah. um, that's definitely. why he's doing the movies he does right now, which is like, yeah, it's, it's not all like armpit farts. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's like, it's, it's like an actual, it's an actual film that has yes. you know, just the right amount of comedy in it. Exactly. Similar to, to like, make what... it like lighthearted. Exactly. Similar to like, I love when I see that, like when like directors like, him or Sam Raimi or Peter Jackson like flourish and 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 like fucking eat up Hollywood like but they started off mm. with like doing these kind of movies that's fucking I, I, exactly. I love seeing that even even if I'm not exactly into I, I'm not really into what James Gunn does but I feel like proud like like one of us is successful you know like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, another trauma fan you exactly know, gets to do guardians of the galaxy <laughs> exactly okay petri so dude it was wonderful catching up thank you so much for doing this yeah um, man um i could have i i easily could have done another two hours this has been i know really, really, i know really i know fun. me too dude it's been it, yeah it's been two hours so i think i think it's a good time um yeah once again thank you so much and and let's Let's speak soon, all right? Whether it's like uh, movies or music, like always. I would hope so, man. And I really hope to get to see you like in person yes. as soon as possible. When, when whenever you, you're, uh, yeah, and maybe we should do, uh, maybe we should do, uh, you know, Helsinki Crate dig Diggers as well, if you Please. ever make it here. Please, for sure. Um, the other day. It would be so much fun. Bingo. Shh. The other day, um, my, my, my girlfriend was asking me, what's my perfect, like, crate digger, what, sorry, what's my perfect, like, um, uh, um, birthday Hola, gift? Hola, bingo. Yeah, exactly. What's my per perfect birthday gift? Um, I was like, I, I wasn't asking her to do this at all, but I'm like, the perfect gift is for someone to, to give me like a bunch of money whether it's like 50 euros or 200 euros i don't care and like drop me off mm. at, a, at a record store where i can create dig and, <laughs> and then later get some like delicious like vegan food or something you know that's for me is like the perfect yeah yeah. yeah yeah man yeah. totally so the, what, I, what <laughs> I was getting to is like i will i will i i definitely want to i feel very proud of you for opening this store you know so i definitely would like to Thank Maybe you. once all of this shit's over, able to go visit. I certainly hope so. Yeah. So it this will be so much so yes. much fun. This chat is a, a a step in the right direction. So, dude, take care. Yeah, much love to the rest of the feast and dudes. And um, you too. Take care and uh, and give my best to uh, rest of the tea guys. And uh, we really hope to see you guys soon. And as a, let's fucking tour. We yes, want to do that we'll tour do, with we'll, you. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Let's let's make it a point when all of this COVID shit's over, because we we have uh, we yeah. haven't done Europe in a while. Let's let's try to do it together. All right. That would be or wherever the, best the fuck. Thing let's ever. go anywhere. You know, it doesn't have to be Europe. Yeah, let's we can we can have fights at record stores. Like I saw that first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, take care. Push each other in front of the crates. Yeah, you, you too. Take care, man. Hey, boys and ghouls, that was my conversation with Petri from Fistem. And um, after doing a lot, well, what a great guy, what a great guy that was. Uh, please um, go, no, I don't have any sponsors. <laughs> Anyways, I'm still new to this. I'm still fresh to this. That was my second podcast ever. Yeah, and um, today I have my third podcast with, um, with Luke from FUBAR and Doomstar Bookings and bloodshed festival and a bunch of other things so that's going to be in exactly 15 minutes and i'm looking forward to that so hails petri and uh if you're ever in helsinki go visit his fucking record store pick up a uh, a record and drink a beer in his name so thank you once again and i will see you next week with uh, luke from fubar